Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Neshi, the man, the myth, the crystal beast legend with the luscious beard has came in third place with teched out crystal beast. Jesus Christ, Neshi. Only you could do this. So destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even further into the 1,000 subscriber club. Be part of the A gang, as one of my subscribers said. I love saying that now. Oh, and I meant to do my new intro now that we're at 1,000 subscribers. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's your host with the most, AvriLR32, here bringing you guys a third place Crystal Beast deck profile out of seven rounds at, I think it was an Arizona regional, I believe is where Neshi is located. Anyway, I want to talk about this because I've been on a Crystal Beast binge lately. Uh, if you haven't seen my last deck profile, you definitely should because besides the Fenrir, rear being in the side deck uh, me and neshi's main deck is exactly the same and really i'm happy with that because he's an expert in crystal beast so I'm, I'm happy to know that i'm on the right track with my build um i feel like my build is just good to go for the regional honestly so i do have a question for you though valley d aka our homie derek do you still think crystal beast suck since they just got third place at a seven round regional he's probably going to comment and be like yes they still suck <laughs> his argument is you're playing bad cards to get to more bad cards but it's like this this card ain't bad. This card's good. Same same with this one, as long as you have enough crystal beast. So let's go ahead and dive on into this deck profile here. So uh like I said, he came in third place. He went X1. He spanked tier elements ass all that day. Uh, which you should be with this build because this build's pretty much designed to beat tier. And moving forward in Magnificent Mavens, that's going to be a really good thing because it's going to be tier zero. So we're playing one copy of Rainbow Dragon. You actually should be playing Rainbow Dark Dragon in this build, but I'm going to get to why. Um, two copies of the Zenith or Crystal Beast, or excuse me, Crystal Beast Rainbow Dragon. That's its fucking uh, OCG name. We're playing only two copies of Fenrir. I, ugh, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't like this at all. I, I don't, I don't like it. I don't fucking like it. Uh, one copy of Druid Worm, two copies of Magnamute, and then three copies of Shifter with the three Sapphire Pegasus, the one Cobalt Eagle, and the one Broke Ass Ruby Carbuncle. For the spells, we're playing two copies of Crystal Bond. You only need two, you don't need three. Stop. Two Foolish Burial Goods, three copies of Rainbow Bridge, and ain't once per turn, folks. Three copies of Prosperity, three Awakening of the Crystal Ultimates, and three Bridge of the Heart, one Necro Valley, because it says fuck you to tier, one Mystic Mine, one Bridge of Salvation, three Crystal Compulsory Evacuation Device Conclave, <laughs> and then two copies of Infernity Barrier Crystal Miracle. Um, for the extra deck, we're playing one Garuba, one Mud Dragon, and then just a shit ton of rank fours. His extra deck's a little bit different from mine. He's playing Goddess uh, of the Closed World. I'm playing Access Code. Uh, and then he wasn't playing Unicorn, but I mean, like, really, the extra deck is kind of just whatever you want. The main things that you want to include is, like, Boguska, Chidori, Dweller, Cowboy for Time, a Zeus package, because Zeus is good, and then either Underworld Goddess or Access Code with a Verdant, and then, like, that's, that's really it. Like, you have a lot of flexibility in this extra deck. Um, for the side deck, he side decks the third Fenrir. I don't like this either. One Feather Duster. Uh, the third Foolish Barrel Goods. I don't really feel like this is necessary either. Uh, three Cosmics. I would do Lightning Storm personally. Three Super Poly. One Secret Village. And then uh, for the trap line up here, we're playing three evenly. One a pointer. I don't know how I feel about this either. And then the third Crystal Miracle, which is like, it's really interesting to be honest. So with, with the whole deck list out of the way, let, let's go ahead and just discuss this build as a whole. So right off the bat... Uh, Neshi has a Ghost Rare Rainbow Dragon, so I don't blame him for wanting to play that. But believe it or not, Rainbow Dragon is <laughs> its actually kind of better. Because instead of a card like Rainbow Dragon, that's just a brick 100% of the time. Rainbow Dark Dragon is only a brick 99% of the time. And I say that because in order to play Rainbow Dark Dragon, you have to banish 7 Dark Monsters with different names from your grave. Well, you've got 1, 2, 3 in the main deck. And then in the extra deck, you got 4... Uh, where the hell are the other ones? Uh, ba 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 ba. Five. So you got five, and then if you include two more, which you very easily can in this extra deck, like just depending on what cards you play, then you can drop out Rainbow Dark Dragon. In my own, my personal build, I can actually drop Rainbow Dark Dragon because I have enough darks. Like I have the three in the main, and then I've got four in the extra deck. I don't remember uh what two cards he's missing from mine here but i actually have seven darks with different names is it ever going to come up no just if you want something that's not a 100 brick 
and something that's actually just a 99% brick, you could play Rainbow Dark Dragon. That's just a little nitpick of mine. Now, Fenrir at two. So here's the thing. With big brain plays, like if you want to do some mind games, right? Neshi probably went into this thinking, okay, uh, number one, I want a 40 card main deck because I want to be as insulated as possible, the highest chance possible to get to D-Shifter. I understand that. The thing is with Fenrir, it's special summons not once per turn. And like as a mind game, you could search once off the Fenrir. Then when you draw for turn on your next turn, you just don't search. And then when you draw again on that following up turn, you can be like, oh, damn, I forgot to search off a Fenrir. And then you just don't search again. The opponent thinks that you drew into a Fenrir. I get that. I doubt that that's what he was going for. I feel like he just really wanted to have a 40 card deck to have the best chance possible of getting to a D shifter just to blow the opponent out. Um, but side decking it, I feel like it's just a really bad idea, especially when Fenrir is arguably better going second. And so it is a card that you can side out, but I don't feel like Fenrir should be played as a two of in the main deck. Like I feel like it's either, excuse me, I feel like it's either you have to play three or none because I feel like it's kind of similar to something like Airblade Turbo format. You know, in Airblade Turbo format, you could play three Stratos and it's not once per turn. So I feel like Fenrir is in the same boat as like a Stratos in that regard. So it's like, why would you only play two Stratos in Airblade Turbo format? Like you would play three. That's just me. I like being able to have the three Fenrir. I want to hit it as much as I can, especially because in in the grind game, like this is arguably the best card in all of Yu-Gi-Oh for the grind game. Like it's just an auto win. You just slam it down on the table. So I feel like that this just has to be a three of. You got to make this a 41 card main deck. Same thing with Foolish Burial Goods. Your side deck is so important, especially in a rogue deck, that having a card that doesn't really do you anything, like it's not like a Cosmic where it can hit a back row or a Raigeki, a Lightning Storm, what have you, and you're taking out a Bond, but yet you're already basically playing five Foolish Burial Goods because the Ultimates can dump the Salvation and you have the Goods. So clearly, like, he really wanted to get to Foolish Burial Goods as quick as he could going first. But he was also talking about how he would side deck out D-Shifter. And I feel that that is really the biggest difference between our current format and going into Magnificent Mavens. You don't ever want to side deck out your D-Shifters because you're already going... The, the tier matchup in general is already going to be a bit more difficult because if you play D-Shifter and they have Herald of the Orange Light, you're kind of fucked because now they're going to probably ditch Aigido and make both of y'all mill five. And so I feel like D shifter is just, it, it can never come out unless you're going against like Flunder. Against pure Runic, it just spanks them. Against Runic Sprite, it spanks pretty well. Um, I just, I feel like your only side outable cards are like the Fenrir's, the Bysteel package, maybe your Bridge of Salvation package, maybe one Conclave, maybe one Ultimate, and maybe a bond depending on what else you throw in like that's really it everything else is just like engine that's not side outable if that makes sense so like other than these two cards i think everything else is is for the most part solid i like the idea of side decking the third miracle and then being able to go first and just pop off with as many miracles in the back row that you can you know the opponent draws a six cards at hand you have three miracle set they're playing with a three card hand even against like a stun deck not a lot of decks can really handle that especially like if you time them well like oh just jesus take the wheel like yeah, the opponent's gonna be screwed uh, a pointer at one i don't really know how i like a pointer at one it just it feels feels more luck sacky than anything like okay cool you open up the one of a pointer like you, you get the dust shoot effect um or with my luck i'm about to go into time and then my opponent slow plays me because i'd pay two thousand i personally don't really feel like i want to be playing the one of it's different with something like feather duster because it's like oh shit you hit that you can just drop it on the board pop the back row and you're good to go if they were up to me i don't think i would play the third miracle i feel like two is fine because it's kind of like what what are you going to take out for the third miracle like are you going to take out ultimates probably not you would maybe have to take out a goods or a bond because i'm never taking out fucking d shipper going into my regional magnificent mavens comes out the day before i'm never taking out fucking d shippers i'm sorry neshi your beard is luscious uh, I love you, but I just D shifter is too damn good, bro. It conflicts with goods, but he even said himself, like, you just use shifter and then use goods on your follow up turn. So it doesn't really brick per se. And, like, if you know you're playing tier after game one, then you just go the goods route and play Necro Valley and just don't even use shifter in that case. 
So then that way you're not, you can't get Herald of the Orange lighted. So that's, that's just little nitpicks of mine. I feel like if I were to do this side, I feel like I would take out the Appointer and the Miracle, the Goods, throw the Fenrir into the main and play a 41 card main. Actually, shit, I could just show you what it would look like. Because, I mean, really, other than those couple changes, it's basically just my build. Uh, yeah, and then th this is my build here. Uh, I love Macro and Deep Fisher. Uh, I don't have different Dimension Grounds. And you're you're going to want to banish the shit out of Magnificent Maven cards. Or, excuse me, Shizu cards. So, like, I'm doing Lightning Storm instead of Cosmics. Like, we just we, we can just throw these on out in the garbage. Uh, Deep Fisher and Macro, they do conflict a little bit with your Crystal Beast because... And the buy steel package. This isn't even. We're not even playing in three of those buy steels. There we go. That's that's what we're looking at. Um, yeah, this is what we're actually doing. So I feel like macro D is just going to be so disgusting going into my regional, just because I feel like tier is going to be big. On top of that, too, even if tier's not big, like every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh right now needs the grave. So D Fisher macro isn't even really a loss if I go against something that's rogue. If there is a lot of rogue at this regional, like the Book of Raton one had, so. Guys, these are just my thoughts. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Am I am I just totally wrong? Is there something I'm missing that maybe Neshi just didn't mention? Neshi, I you're the Crystal Beast God, bro. Like you're you're Rainbow Dark Dragon Incarnate. <laughs> like real talk, film. Uh, congrats on getting your third place. Um, yeah, I hope that I uh, hope you keep on doing well, guys. You know, people make fun of you for playing Crystal Beast. Like to anyone out there playing Crystal Beast, you know, let them know. Hey, this deck came in third place at a regional. Like. This deck needs to be respected. I feel that this deck, at least pre-Mavens, is a very good rogue deck pick, especially if you're willing to learn all the lines of play. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.